Hi, I'm Frank Clark, and over the last several months, I've been recording the story of my life on, on YouTube and Facebook for my grandchildren. Now, why am I doing this? I have two grandsons. One's 22, one's three. I'm 69 years old. I will be 70 in August, and right around my birthday, my first granddaughter is going to be born. None of us knows how long we're going to be on this earth. So I wanted to tell those who come after me my story in my words. And... If this has interest, if it's piqued your interest, and you want to tell your story, then you, ha you have to ask yourself three questions. And the first is, why am I doing this? The second is, how am I doing this? And the third is, where am I doing this? And each one of these is very, very important, but the most important is, why are you doing it? For me, very simple. You know, every day we only know one thing. We have one less day on this earth than we had yesterday. So the more of my story that I tell now, the more of it in total I can tell. Now you might be different. You, I, I, I've led a very, very interesting life. I've been a, a police officer. I've been a trash man. I've been a revenue officer at the Internal Revenue Service. I have a lot of stories about my life, about the things that I've done in life. I've, I used to hitchhike all over the place. And not that I recommend anybody doing that these days, but back when I was a kid, you could, uh, you could hitchhike. And so I want to tell as many of these stories as I can. But you might have a different reason. You might want to pass down family recipes, or you might be uh, right now investigating your family tree and going back into your ancestry. And maybe you, you've uncovered all kinds of fascinating things about your family, and you want to share them with those who come after you. So you have to do that. You have to, you have to say, why am I doing this? And then the last thing you have to say is, where am I doing this? So let's get to why am I doing this first. I would write it out. You know, you have a story to tell, but you have to figure out what that story is and a whole bunch of things about it. So I would write it out and I would write it out almost like a mission statement. Trust me. It's going to change over time. Mine did. So I started by just telling my story. Then, I mean, I played guitar for most of my life. And I used to sing before I got cancer, throat cancer. So I started to pick up my guitar. And some of the, the videos have some music that influenced me throughout my life. And some are just instructional. Now, recently I started reading Bible story, or well, reading through the Bible, and also reading stories, things like fables and myths and fairy tales. Yours will morph too. But one thing I do wanna say, there's one caveat. I'm telling my story. I try not to make myself this big hero in the story, and I and and I try to look at myself honestly. <clears throat> but this is not about getting revenge on those who have wronged you in the past or anything like that. You need to tell your story in a good light, something that that shows that your grandchildren or whoever you're making this for 
should look up to you and, and want to watch these videos as they get older when you're gone to watch them. They, um, now, the next thing is, how am I doing this? The, the one thing I want to say about this is perfect is the enemy of good enough. You want to capture information. You, you don't want to do this perfect production. I mean, you're not doing a stage production of Camelot. <clears throat> Trust me, you won't be able to. I know I couldn't. So start by gathering ideas and just start writing them down. I would use a commonplace book. Walk around with a book, a notepad, whatever. And just as things start popping out of your head, in fact, right now, if you have paper and pencil or stop the video and get some, start writing, writing things down as they come out of your head because you and I both know that we all wake up in the middle of the night and we have a great idea and in the morning we know we had a great idea but we don't remember what it was same thing you're driving home from work i have an awesome idea oh i can't wait to get home and write it down you get home you know you had the idea you don't know what it is what do you want to write down well start writing down funny family stories uh, times of trial in your life. Write down the names of interesting family members and the things that they did that caused you to believe that they were interest, interesting or are interesting. This can be about people that have gone before you and people that are in your life now because they're not always going to be here. And besides that, your grandchildren want to know your relationship with the people that they know, their parents. So don't just limit this to dead ancestors, unless that's the plan. Now, second, in, in the how am I doing this, is recording your history on videos and that's that's part of what I did now get in, in a second I'll get into the other part of what what I've been doing you need to find out the equipment you need there's plenty of videos on YouTube that teach you how to make a YouTube video I use a little stand and and a little microphone I would show them to you but they're in use now you have to decide whether you want a script or you don't. I normally script, but I don't always. And some of my music videos, I talk about the song, what it means to me, but I don't have an actual script. I'm just standing there playing my guitar. But I do have sheet music that I'm using because I'm an old man with a bad memory. I can't memorize all these songs, so I, I play them off of sheet music. So you have to figure all this stuff out, how you're gonna be able to sit down and get your story onto a video recording so that you can figure out next where you're gonna share it. One thing about making these videos is, once again, you're not gonna be perfect and that's the enemy of good enough, but you wanna be a fairly good public speaker my recommendation is you join an organization like Toastmasters. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, you're going to become a better public speaker. But also, you're going to have a chance to try out your stories. Now, the first time you go to a Toastmasters meeting, you're going to be a bundle of nerves and the last time you go, you're still gonna be a bundle of nerves. It just won't be as nervous. You'll, you'll learn to control your nerves, but I never got rid of them. I mean, you're always gonna be a little nervous when you get up in front of people. 
but you're going to get to know these people and you're going to be speaking to people that you know eventually. So in the beginning, you're talking to a room full of strangers and it's the first time you've done it. Now, the fifth time you've done it, you're a member of this organization. You've joined, you've paid the whatever it is, 60 hours a year to, to maintain your membership. You're eligible for all the benefits, the online tutorials. You'll have a mentor from the organization and all this stuff. And and so you're gonna become better probably pretty quickly. But watch out, don't go down a rabbit hole. Toastmasters is there to help you become a better public speaker, but they have a mission and their mission involves preparing people to become contestants in speaking contests and evaluators in, in speaking contests. And that's fine. If you get in there and you say, you know, I want to become the best public speaker on the planet, they'll help you try to, to achieve that dream. But you'll know when you're good enough to, I don't want to say start recording your videos, but to feel confident in the videos that you put out. So my suggestion is that before you do anything else, after you're done watching this video, especially if you're doing it on your phone, is get out a piece of paper write down a topic, something from your past. It, it could be a dream that you have, something that you want to accomplish in your life. And you want to share that with those who are coming after you. Write down the heading, write down a couple bullet points, get out your phone and shoot the video. And then watch it. The best way to become a better public speaker is to record yourself and then <laughs> it might be painful from time to time but watch the recording and take down notes and also if you become a member of Toastmasters you can record your stuff and play it for your mentor and, and they'll help you they'll help you but you will have an idea of what you need to do to get ready. You might be ready right now. Maybe you speak in public all the time. Maybe you're a school teacher or you work at a business where you do presentations. You get up in front of people all the time. You probably have the rudimentary skills to make a really, really good video. And by really, really good, I'm not talking about the quality of the cinematography or anything like that. I'm talking about a really good story, telling your story. Now, another thing that you wanna think about, because so far we've only talked about making videos about things that you know about your past and about your family and about your, you know, hopes and dreams and, and about instructional things. And, but the next thing is real time travel and events. My wife and I recently went on a 111 day trip from our home in Jacksonville Beach, Florida to Marrakesh, Morocco. It was during COVID-19 times and my wife doesn't fly. So we had to find a boat to take over to Europe and then a boat to get back from Europe. We took uh, trains, automobiles and buses on, in Europe and Africa had a wonderful time and I blog every day. It's very, very challenging to do. You go on a trip, next time you go on a one week trip with your husband or wife, blog every day and, and just see how difficult it is to do. 
And then at the end of the day, what you, what you can do is put the pictures for that day on Facebook with your blog entry. People don't think of Facebook as a blog, but it's the world's largest blog, I'm sure. Instagram also, but I chose Facebook. Here's a couple of things that I, that I learned on the run by doing this. Take notes during the day. My wife and I aren't party animals. We don't go out at night. We go do touristy things during the day or other awesome things during the day that are not so touristy. But at night, we're not going out discoing or anything like that. So I would sit there at night and write. But sometimes she wanted to have a late dinner or something and I was challenged to get it done. Sometimes I'd be sitting there at midnight finishing up. So I learned to take notes during the day. You can do it on, with a piece of paper on a pad or something. But what I did is, is I kept them in the notes pad, the notes page of my phone. Um, edit your photos on the run. You, you go into a world-class art museum, and we went into many of them on our trip. And you're going to take a lot of pictures. You're going to take pictures of you and the people that you're there with. You're going to be taking pictures of the art. You're going to take way too many pictures. So as you're sitting on the bus going from point A to point B, delete the pictures that you don't want. Go through and look at them and figure out like, well, do I really want this picture? No, get it out of there. Because you don't want to put 135 pictures into one post on Facebook unless there are 135 really good pictures because nobody's gonna look at all that stuff. If they know you're just putting a bunch of junk on there, they're not gonna, they're not gonna keep scrolling through. Even your grandchildren. And also, charge your phone on the run. Get yourself a portable charger the most horrible thing to have happen is that you're, you're doing so much stuff, you're taking these notes, you're, you're taking these videos, you're you know, doing all the things that people do on a phone, trying to stay in touch with, with your relatives back home, and oh no, I'm at 10%. Well, if you have a phone charger with you, you can just zap that right in there and, and you're good to go. Just charge it up. Now I mentioned instructional videos briefly. That's that's one of the things that I morphed into. Um, also with that, perfect is the enemy of good enough, but also keep it simple, stupid, K-I-S-S. -S. Unless videoing the actual process is really important. Like, if you're passing down family recipes, you could just sit there and talk about how to make it. But it might be good to see grandma make her world famous spaghetti that you eat on Sunday at, at Sunday dinner every week and, and to, to be able to go back 30 years from now and watch grandma do that again. But realize Whenever you start to film the process, instead of just sitting here like I am and filming yourself, that you need either more equipment or a second person to help you, which isn't a bad thing if you have a second person to help you. In fact, it's a good thing because people can work on the project with you. My wife does her own thing. She has her own way of handing down her legacy to our grandchildren. So she's not involved in mine and I'm not really involved in hers. So this works for me and you have to figure out what works for you. Once again, don't go down a rabbit hole. One thing about, about having a second person work with you is you can both tell your story together. If it's a husband and wife or a brother and sister or, or a child and, and parent, you can work together 
to get it right. And especially if one person's better with technology, but the other person's better with storytelling, well, you're a team now. So you want, you want to figure out all this stuff, but just be careful that you don't get off track, that you really stick to what it says your goal is. When I said to write it down, it's going to change, but you don't want to have what's called mission drift, where slowly over time, the goalpost moves to, to the point where you don't recognize what you're doing now as compared to what you set out to accomplish. Now the next and last thing, the third thing, is where am I doing this? So we asked, why am I doing this? How am I doing this? And now where am I doing this? I do it on YouTube, and Facebook. I also post things to Instagram and, and Rumble, Reddit, LinkedIn, probably one or two, oh, Twitter. I put them on there. But when I blogged, it was just on Facebook. Now, why did I pick Facebook? Because my children are on Facebook. They're not on certain other things. One of them's not on Twitter. I don't know if either of them are on LinkedIn, but Facebook worked. So I used that. YouTube works. Both of my children are on YouTube and my grandson's on YouTube and, and Facebook. So I, I, would, I would have that as the controlling factor of where you share these things. And you want to talk to them about it. You want to bring them into this process to the point where you can make, on YouTube anyway, and, and Facebook, I believe. Yes, on YouTube and Facebook. You can make other people administrators and they can go in there and do what, what you give them permission to do. And it varies. I'm not gonna go into this. It's not that kind of video to explain those things. But that is something that you wanna have that in place. You're doing this for people to watch these things when you're gone. Well, there'll be somebody that's in charge of it. Now, hopefully they're not somebody that's, that doesn't like you. And when you, you die, they erase all your stuff, but yeah. I don't think my kids will do that. Hopefully yours won't either. You also have to figure out whether you want to share these things with a select group of people or to everybody. And that's that's for you to decide. And when you post things, it'll give you those, op uh, those options. In most social media, they'll give you those options. One thing I do want to mention, and this is backtracking a little, there's certain blog sites. Like I was talking to a guy the other day that is an avid hiker. And I, and I talked to him about the things that I'm talking to you about today. And he said, well, I, I have things on this website that's a blog site. So they're already on there. And, and my grandchildren can go on there and, and read them. <clears throat> Yeah, okay. They're not going to. If, if you want them to at least have a chance to see them, you need to put these things on popular sites. Unless your children are all about getting them in there and reading your blogs about hiking the Appalachian Trail. And I'm, and I'm sure they're fascinating. The, the man was fascinating. He, he, he'd led a fascinating life so far. He was 73 the other day when I talked to him and he looked like he was 40. So you want to think about all these things. And another thing is shooting in the wild. Now I'm shooting in the wild today. That's what I call it. I'm in front of Planet Fitness where I just worked out. I'm in my workout 
stuff. I, I went for a run on the beach before I came over here. And then I got a cup of coffee, as you could see. And I'm sitting here in my van again doing this. <clears throat> there was a car that started up, a truck or something over here for a little bit. And it revved up its engine. You heard that. When you shoot in the wild with people around, you're going to have noise. You have to decide what you can put up with and what you can't. And what the people who listen to these things and watch them are, are gonna be putting up with and what they, what they shouldn't have to put up with. I've, I've been doing videos in, in parks sitting at a picnic bench where I had people come up and start to talk to me. I just made it part of the video. Like, hey, yeah. And I had one where, where a guy asked me how much for my van because it, it was for sale. And he sold it for sale sign. Hey, how much for your van? So I told him and he left. He didn't like the price, I guess. So... In fact, right now, there's a, a Vanagon getting ready to pull in right next to me. And it's an old one from the 80s. So this guy's probably going to come over and want to talk to me. It's in nice shape, too. I would like to shoot at home a lot. But quite often, I, I just can't find the place. You know, my wife's there, <clears throat> there's a TV on. If I go in, into the garage, the, the washing machine's gone. If I go onto the back deck, you can hear the, the air conditioner kicking on and the three days of winter that we have here in North Florida, you hear the, uh, you'll hear the heater kick on. So it, it's, it's just really hard to find a place. But you'll find, and if one thing you want to realize is that you're shooting videos about you, so you should shoot them in the world you live in. I go to Planet Fitness to work out. I've thought about actually doing a couple videos in there. Just sit over in the corner in the, in the front room of it, sort of like a lounge, and start shooting. People probably will leave you alone if they see what you're doing. You know, they... they family right now is walking past and they're looking in like what is this man doing and they think I'm either shooting a video or I'm on the phone with a relative you know Skyping or something but um, it doesn't have to be a, a studio with perfect lighting and everything I'm grandpa they're used to seeing me like this they're used to seeing me when I need a haircut. They're used to seeing me when my glasses are a little dirty. They're used to seeing me at my good and bad. So if they watch a video of me, is it going to be a better video? Because I I had some makeup guy come in and do, and do makeup for me. That my beard's properly trimmed all the time. It's you. It's you. You're probably not going to become some YouTube star making, you know, a six-figure salary every year just off your videos going viral. Probably not going to happen to you. Probably not going to happen to me. In fact, I'm almost certain it's not going to happen to me. Maybe you'll have better luck than me. So that brings us to the end. We, we looked at these three things. Why am I doing this? You want to shoot the story of your life? Well, why? Write it down. Figure it out. How am I doing this? Am I going to shoot it on my phone? Am I going to buy a, an expensive camera? What am I going to do? Am I going to have somebody help me shoot it? Or am I going to do it myself? Figure that out. Sit down. Shoot a video. Script it or don't script it. Whatever. Come up with an idea. Don't come up with an idea. Just turn it on and start talking. If that's something that'll turn you on, just do it. See what you got. And, and then the last is where. Shoot in the environment that the people you're doing this for 
are used to seeing you in and everything will come out okay. Peace out, folks.